So we are going in on two minutes here and we're going to go ahead and get started. And so I am going to introduce you to my lovely friends. Thank you so much for joining me. And I'm going to start with Emma Newey. She is White Beam Wood and she has two self-catered cottages. Hey, Emma. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Um, tell us a little known fact about you and tell us your location too, so people can match up the accent. Okay, so I'm in the UK and uh, both of our houses are in South Devon. And the little known fact about me is that all three of our dogs are blood donors. That is awesome. Yay. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Next, we have Andrew Shore with Hospitable. Hospitable is a direct, he is part of the direct booking solution. So that's why he's with us on the direct booking. And Hospitable is a tech company. They're really awesome people. Love hanging out with them at the conferences. Um, Andrew, where are you from? Where are you at right now? And, yeah. and what's your little known fact? Okay. Yeah. My accent is not going to match my location. I am broadcasting from Florence, Italy, where I live, but I'm American by birth. Um, I guess my little known fact is I speak Chinese because I lived in China for 15 years of my, of my life. So. Wow. Okay. So, so tell us something in Chinese real quick. Um, say so like I can introduce my product. Um, but yeah, we were at VRMA one time we had, uh, last year and we had a, a Chinese couple walk up and start speaking Chinese. I'm like, I got this <laughs> walked over and started introducing it in Chinese. It was good. It's good fun. That is awesome. Thank you. All right. And lastly, we have my friend, Scott Macadara, Macadara, Branson Lakes Lodging. <laughs> Scott, tell us where you're at and your little known fact. I'm in lovely Branson, Missouri, so I'm uh, in, in Missouri as well. The weather, fortunately, has cooled down a little bit, and uh, so I'm taking the opportunity to be outside, which is which is lovely. Um, my little-known fact, uh, it's a little embarrassing. I'm almost 50 years old, but I still actively play video games, um, especially with my children. I have a 11-year-old and a 19-year-old, and we like to get on together and play Fortnite and other games. Uh, it's a great bonding experience, and uh, you know, help. I think it helps keep me young and active, so <laughs> at least nice. my mind. Yeah, that's right. I love it. And there's so many different things that you can do that that's it's puzzles to me. Video games yeah. can be mm -hmm. puzzles. Um, I play Tetris a lot and I use those concepts quite a bit. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, I guess I should introduce myself. Um, I am Tyan Marsink Hammond. I am with Touch Day, the queen of guest experience. I am also a property manager in Branson, Missouri, Branson Family Retreats. And what I love about what you all are getting in this webinar is the fact that you have different amounts of properties and different viewpoints um, that you're going to get for this direct booking. So Emma has two self-catered cottages. I have about 20 properties and Scott has close to 50 properties. So very good, um, different viewpoints that's going to come in on this. And then of course, um, Andrew and I both will have the tech um, aspect as well. All right. So a little bit of housekeeping, everybody on the webinar, please feel free to drop into the chat or the Q and A, send us questions. We will get to them towards the end, depending upon when they pop up. Um, if I have the chat activated, I don't remember if I activated it. Looks like um, it's not. But... It's not. Okay. Okay. So send into your Q and A folks, if you wouldn't mind, please um, just hop in who you are, say hi. That's, that'd be great too, to see you all there. Okay. So getting started here, direct bookings. How do we achieve more? Let's start with the foundation. Um, and I'm going to ask Scott and Emma this question. Um, and we'll start with Emma. Why are direct bookings important to you? So a hundred percent of our bookings across both houses are direct. We don't, we don't do any indirect bookings at all. For me, I guess the main thing is, um, is actually the relationship that we build with our clients and with our customers. Um, and the fact that we actually, we can really engage with them and really build that personal relationship. So I really want our guests to know that we're perfect for them. Um, and I really love the fact that they can reach out to us and trust us and trust that we're building that relationship. All of our guests bring their dogs. So they, there's a kind of an additional element to that as well. Um, and I guess also we don't pay anyone commission. That is awesome. That is, that is, that is great, especially the whole commission part. Um, but I'm sure you have a marketing line budget though, too, uh, to go along with that. Absolutely. Yeah, we do. Yeah. 
Awesome. And we're going to get, don't worry, guys, we will get more to Emma's marketing line budget later because we know how important that is. <laughs> All right, Scott, why are direct bookings important to you? Yeah. Well, I'm, much like Emma said, relationships um, are, are key. I, I like developing long-term relationships with our guests um, and providing them a product they enjoy and love and want to come back to. Uh, so that's that's a big one. Uh, control uh, is another one. Control over our bookings and control over um, what how things go with that booking and whether or not you know we're not the, at the mercy of Airbnb or VRB or the OTAs to say hey you have to do this with that reservation. Um, if things go either perfectly smooth or even if we have a little bit of you know, things that go a little bit of sideways, um, they can make unilateral decisions sometimes that don't necessarily benefit you um, or the guest. Um, again, value and not paying commission is fantastic. Um, and being able to uh, get get that repeat business without having to pay commission multiple times for the same the same per same guest over and over again is nice. Uh, and then lastly, building building our brand. Um, you know, getting people out there, uh, knowing who we are and getting them to recommend us, uh, to their friends and family is, is huge to us and, and being, and having those people come to us naturally is, is, would be it's spectacular. Yeah. I think, I think key, key point there is you're not paying that commission over and over again for the same guest because a repeat guest should cost less than getting a new guest. Hey, Andrew, what is the advantage of direct bookings over an OTA booking? And folks, when we say OTA, online travel agent is what it stands for. So those um, referring to Airbnb, Verbo, booking.com, any of those listing sites that you might get a, a guest from. So Andrew, what is the advantage of direct bookings over an OTA booking? Sure. I mean, I'm basically going to echo, I think, what, what Emma and Scott said, because you know, we're a very customer driven company, as I'm sure you are at Touch Day. And we basically listened to our host. And this came out, I think, really out of COVID was the was the sentiment that um, it was important for hosts to be their own boss, um, to have their own platform, that they you know couldn't have the rules rewritten on them, depending on um, you know things that were outside of their control. And so it was that sentiment that our customers told us we needed to get into direct booking. And that's what we did. And so it's, yeah, like what Scott said, being your own boss, um, I think it's in, you know, it, you invest so much of your time as a property manager owner in your business. You want that loyalty that accrues from that investment to go to you, not necessarily to build someone else's brand. Um, and then obviously at yeah, the bottom line, so it's, it's, it's just going to be cheaper. It's going to be cheaper for your guests. So you're, you're doing a service for them by providing this to them. And it's going to be cheaper for you on your operating costs. You're going to have a richer payout. Your guest is going to have a cheaper booking. Those are all wins all around. I think an important point there you said was the service and the fact that you can have that direct service to the guest and give them your service versus having an OTA in the middle of it and trying to pigeonhole you into exactly what it is that they want you to do across the board. Because, you know, as we talked about earlier, we have three folks here with three different, completely, um, completely different types of properties and business models. And we all do business differently. However, it comes down to, we all want excellent service and guest satisfaction. And uh, that's the direct bookings really help us apply that and, and our brand to it as well. Okay, so the process of direct bookings. Let's talk about an important step to doing direct bookings um, because people, you know, I, I talk to a lot of folks, they say, oh yeah, direct bookings, that sounds great, but I, I don't know how to get started on it. And it's scary. So Andrew, what is an important step to doing direct bookings? Yeah, sure. I mean, I'd say that's, that's, Probably something we try to excel at. We we target the the smaller property owners at Hospitable, um, so we make it really really easy to get started. Like you can start in like ten minutes. Um, you've got all your content already prepared, right? You've already uploaded it to OTAs. We can take that and spin out a site for you in in minutes. Um, I think the important thing is that because it's so easy to start experimenting with direct booking, if you're using Hospitable or someone else, you want to make sure you have some guardrails in place when you get started. So, you know, the things that an OTA provides as far as kind of your risk mitigation. So, you know, they are vetting um, the people to a certain extent and they are providing, you know, for Airbnb, it's air cover, you know, whatever it is, you have some protection with there. You need to find replacements for those. Um, if you're just getting into it, you don't, you know, maybe are a little bit inexperienced, those things that you have to take on, you know, like you're going to have to deal with chargebacks if you don't have a solution for that. So 
easy to experiment, but you have to be a little bit careful, a little bit savvy. Um, and that's what eventually got us to our, our premium product is we found out that um, our host wanted that to be turnkey. And so we, we kind of took all of the good things of the OTA, the risk mitigation, the trust, the trust building mechanisms, and we, we, we bundled those into a turnkey solution. So all of that works out of the box. Um, but if you are doing something more, more basic than that, there, there are some caution, uh, cautions to have. Yeah, that's really good points um, because when you go into the OTAs and your listing sites, they make it feel like they do everything for you and that you're going to miss out on things uh, when you do direct booking. Uh, for me, when I started, um, I started way back before Airbnb existed. So I've been doing this for a long time. I took checks and people actually signed a piece of paper as my guest agreement and put it in the mail with a stamp. Okay. And then they mailed it to me. That's, that's how old I am. <laughs> um, but the, the, the biggest thing uh, for that important step is you just, you have to establish trust and whether you're doing that by showing your profiles on social media, your about us page on your website, just being very transparent in who you are. Now you don't have to share everything about you, but just those touch points you're comfortable sharing because then those things about you, your guests can connect with them. So all those different connecting, all those different touch points, and then communicating with your guests. Don't rely see, when you're on OTAs, you're thinking, oh, okay, well, they're sending messages out and things like that. They're doing that for me, but you really need to be able to communicate and put in that process. Um, and we'll talk about more about communications, um, especially with the way uh, touch day does with digital guidebooks and things like that. But I want to get to a secret and not a secret, a key aspect. I read that word wrong on my notes. What is the key aspect of setting up these direct bookings that sometimes people forget Scott? You take this first. So do you just want one? I have like just, 10. <laughs> want, just one because Emma's going to do oh, one. And, if, and then if there's something super important that we didn't talk about, you can jump in with another one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say calendar management is a key aspect. Don't forget about that. How are you going to make sure that your calendars between Airbnb, VRBO, and your direct booking uh, are synced? If you have one property and you're on top of it, is that going to be manual? Uh, which I you know, I don't recommend, or are you going to leverage uh, some sort of software like a property management software, uh, much like Hospitable or Uplisting or many others um, that that can handle that type of uh, integration? But yeah, don't don't forget that because the first time you get a, a double booking uh, on your platform or your even your direct site, it's it's not fun. And if you only have one property, you got to you're ruining someone's vacation. So please make sure you take that. And then the next one is don't forget to pay your taxes. Taxes are key. Yeah. Don't get yeah. shut down for something stupid. And, and I want to point out that Scott did not say if you get a double booking. It's when you get That's a double so booking. <laughs> it's when. And I've had it. Yes. And that double booking is one of the things that it's a wake up call. So everything you can to mitigate that coming. Emma, what is what is something that's super important? Uh, so for me, it's booking conditions. Now, because for the last 17 years, we've always taken direct bookings. We've never used an agent. But I think a lot of people um, these days are saying, well, actually, yeah, I'll take direct bookings. That's great. And forget about that side. Forget that actually you need to protect yourself and your guests with watertight booking conditions that are really clear and upfront and don't just change them at a whim and make sure that you articulate those to your guests. And I guess the other thing is be yourself. And Tanya, you touched on that earlier, is that personal approach people often really forget that just be you um with your bookings with especially with the direct bookings it gives you that opportunity to be you and be real and be real about your accommodation and what you offer i love that emma I, the the whole point about yes the booking policies and your terms and conditions especially when you get started you're not sure what they should be um but the thing is yeah you start with a set and don't be afraid to change them. And um, we are always tweaking them, but when you change them, make sure you're upfront with your guests and you have that available before they book. Uh, really good input, thank you. Uh, Scott, is there anything else you wanna add? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this was the 10, um, really quick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're managing for other people, a lot of people, I don't know if this, on this or um, maybe co-hosting on Airbnb or things like that, but if you do, do that for people. Don't forget to build in time. 
uh, or charge for the time that it takes for you to handle direct bookings. They do take more time typically than an OTA uh, because a lot of that is done automatically on the back end. Um, so, you know, do expect phone calls, do expect to have to, you know, be in front of a customer. Uh, and in and, 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 and the Branson market, especially, we have a lot of um, older customers. So there does require a bit more handholding. Um, but, you know, just, just build that in and expect that. And that way you won't be like, hey, why isn't this exactly like it is with Airbnb? There are differences. So, um. oh, thank you. Okay. So the big thing about OTA, Airbnb, Verbo, they are amazing at marketing. They're amazing at bringing travelers to their websites. And then they're looking at the, you know, all the different properties. So we do as direct booking, we're going to have to market somehow. So we're going to talk a little bit about marketing. Uh, Emma, how does your brand contribute to the direct bookings? Because you are a hundred percent, which is absolutely yeah. incredible. Um, so I think the brand to me is not a logo. I think a lot of people think about their brand as just that thing that you have created for you. We actually don't have a physical logo. I think we're one of the few firms in the world that doesn't. Our brand is us. Our brand is our personality. Our brand is who we are and developing that style and being you and being real and keeping that style. I think that's the main thing for our brand. And most of our bookings come through social media. So we very much share a lot about ourselves, but not everything. Um, and so it's being being that person that, that people know they can trust. And you mentioned that earlier as well. It, it's the real trust and that that brand people say that they can recognize that across social media channels. I tend to use the same style and people say, oh, well, I recognize that because you own Real House as well, don't you? I guess it was you because the style's really similar. So that for me, the brand is you, the brand isn't just a logo. And that's that's the main thing I think people need to focus on. Absolutely. I really good point. And I am one of the thing reasons I'm so open about what we do is because there's one aspect of our company that no one can else can replicate. And that's me. And so when we, when, with our brand contributing to the direct bookings, it's the same thing as you, Emma, it's our brand voice. It's who we are. Um, and the more practical things is we make sure that our brand is infused throughout the entire journey. So that means within our listing, within our photos, within any messages that we send to our guests with our digital guidebook through touch day, it's just infused with who we are. Um, and yes, there's a visual aspect of, we do have a logo, we do have colors, um, but we also have that brand voice. We have the photos of us and, and we're talking very much about my husband and I, and we share the story about who we are. And and then that extends all the way through to emails. Also, um, we collect the emails of every single guest. Um, and now you can do that through touch day as well. If you're not getting them through um, with the booking area, um, when the guests book, there's, then you take that and then you constantly touch them throughout the years. And don't think that a, a repeat guest has to be every year. And we have large homes. We have large families. Uh, one of my, one of the best things that happened um, just last year was someone message emailed said, Hey, um, we're going to book this house. Just so you know, we stayed with you 12 years ago for my dad's 80th birthday. And I have stayed on your email list because I know that when we were going to come back, it's now mom's 90th birthday. We wanted to stay with you. And that is 12 years of emailing them. Now I'm not the most consistent. I'm getting better with my email marketing, but the point is, is just, you got to do it and, and collect those email addresses and send those messages out and stay in touch. Um, okay. So Andrew and Scott, this one is for you guys also on marketing. I'll start with Andrew. Um, what are important marketing tasks to secure direct bookings? Sure. Yeah, I think you, you touched on the most, I think the most traditional one with with direct is that you have an email marketing campaign. Um, I think the other one is is getting to the brand building side of it is uh, you want people people to be able to find you. And so that is, you know, having a recognizable brand name, something that people can Google and find your site. Um, that's that's important. And then I think the importance of the the brand building and and having ownership of that is that you can control a lot of the levers right and so you can kind of 
kind of groom the clientele that you want and that fits your business. You can, you can control the whole image of how you present yourself. So, you know, if you're not into hosting parties, bachelor parties at your place, you basically can screen that out by how you position your brand, how you present yourself, how you price your properties, et cetera. Um, you get more control over that. I think that's kind of a trend that we're seeing when the OTAs is it's becoming more of a hotel in the sense that you have less and less control over who you accept. I think um, privacy policies are starting to dictate what the platforms can share with you. Um, whereas with direct booking, um, particularly the, what we have set up with, with our, our premium line is we'll do the guest vetting front loaded before you accept. So you're able to see all the details. And if you do have, you know, especially like the luxury home side, you're probably very discriminating about who you let stay in your properties. Um, you have a lot more control with with direct on on that side. And I think that's that's important. I really like your point on speaking directly to your guest to kind of vet them through the listing. So if you want bachelor parties, you talk directly to them. If you yeah. don't want them, you're speaking. They're not going to come. Yeah. Exactly. You, you speak they're going to recognize you're not talking to them. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I love that. Um, okay, Scott, what yeah. are marketing tasks to secure direct bookings that you guys do? Again, echoing the direct email. Um, we collect every email from every guest um, as as we get bookings. So that's that one's big, and we use um, we use Mailchimp uh, integration. So uh, we use that to send out having um, someone who who either is good at building your brand for you or having someone in your own on your own team that's talented to do that. We we actually we're very fortunate. We have a 21 year old daughter who's fantastic with social media, like most people her age are. Um, but she's also a great artist, uh, has a great eye for putting things together. Um, so she's she's in charge of of building our brand and, and getting that out there and doing a lot of um, in town uh, activities. Uh, so it, it really testing out all the things that we can people can do in town and then sharing those out on our social media. I think it's a great way for people to, you know, get an idea of what they can do in town and see what that what fun they can have. Um, so that that's big for us. And we, you know, we push out on the all the social channels, Facebook, um, Instagram and the like on uh, TikTok. So those those are big, you know, not ignoring um, whole segments um, like if you if you know, don't ignore don't ignore TikTok. Don't ignore uh, Reels. Don't do, do those things because there's a large portion of the population that that uh, is now come up and coming with money uh, that wants to uh, vacation, and they look to those those um, channels to get that uh, how they find out what to, where to go and what to do. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is uh, this: it's a lot of there's a lot of simple things you can do that are pretty cheap and or even free. Um, but you know, in your units, if you want to get repeat booking, put on every your your site on everything every printable or touch day or whatever you use digital guidebooks have a link to your booking site um you know have a have a qr card code someplace where, that they can scan and it, it gets them to that easily uh to that that property or all your properties just you know there's very simple things that you can do that help drive uh repeat traffic and like you said tyan um i'm not expecting people to come back every year there's a lot of choice in the branson market there's 6300 properties um that are rentable here um, but if I can get people to come back, um, when they come back in three to five years, fantastic. And we do have some people that come several times a year and they, they are repeats, but I'm really looking to build that long-term brand loyalty and long-term repeats. Great points. Um, the one, especially I liked that you hit was have someone do marketing because a lot of people just, they just put it out there and like, Oh, if I build it, they will come. Right? No. <laughs> You you have to be active. You have to invest in the marketing. Uh, social media is one good way. Scott, I did the exact same thing. Hired my bonus daughter to help me after I, it was too much for me because I was doing it for a long time. And it's really important to not just think it'll happen. Just letting it go. It, it's still work guys. You know, it, it is a lot of work. Okay, moving on to brand loyalty. So I think we've kind of touched on this, but we'll go ahead um, and talk a little bit about this. Um, Scott, how do you leverage those OTA bookings to become a future direct booking? Yes. <laughs> I actually prepared for the next question. <laughs> but I mean, we like I said, we, we place... Um, uh, printables and other items in our unit, our logos on everything, our QR code, our website is on everything. 
it's in all our communicate guest communications, um, especially, you know, at checkout, um, you know, hey, check us out here, come stay with us again. Um, you know, one of the things we do find is that you can't force people to read things, um, which I, I, I'm sure as many as you, everyone on this call has gone, you know, like people asking for their check-in code or something like that. And it's right there. Um, but it, you know, getting people to you, you kind of inundate them with your logo on your website, but, you know, put it there, um, and they'll see it. Um, and that is huge because in, in, in email marketing, because we get their email through it. So sending that emails, it's, it. I really would love it if every single repeat guest, like we mentioned before, was was a direct booking. Because again, the cost acquisition for a new guest is fairly high um, with paying the OTA fees. So getting them to do that. And, and we do have communications with our guests sometimes afterwards who, even if they've seen all the stuff, contact us directly on platform and say, hey, we're looking to stay again. What kind of deal can you give me? Um, we'll, we will subtly suggest them our website. Uh, through our communication back to them. We don't want to directly put our website in guest communication always with uh, and say book direct with us here, but we do want, because we don't want to have any ramifications from the OTAs if they find us doing that. But we do want to be like, hey, you know, look us up at Branson Lakes Lodging and um, what they do from there is up to them uh, as opposed to sending them direct link to that property on our, on our uh, listing. So, Yeah, very good. Um, I, do, I do those things similar as well. Uh, in my listing, I'll say, you know, the name of the house, the name of our business, our names, dropping all those different hints that I found where the the smart, I call them smart, but the, the wise guests um, go and they search for us and they book direct. And then also the ones that have already come through the OTAs, uh, they rarely do we have someone book again on the OTA and simply because it is a lot of our communication, a lot of our messaging. Um, we do, I have an entire communication flow that we send out. We make sure that people know that they've booked with us. They might've used Verbo to reach us, but we do our best to very nicely hammer in. You have booked with Branson family retreats, or you have booked with Missouri house. And it's a constant thing because with communications, you have to tell them and then you tell them again, and then you tell them again, and then we make sure it is in different ways. So it could be by video. So if the video in our touch day digital guidebook on how to operate the hot tub immediately says, Hey, this is Nat and Tyann with Branson family retreats. And we will say that over and over again. I think um, it was sixth grade where I had, uh, we had a project and it was, we had to create an advertisement. And one of the ways they said you can create an advertisement is you repeat the same thing over and over and over again. So that's just the exact same principle that you have to do um, with the OTAs. But the thing is, is it's not just saying who you are, you also have to give them an easy way. I think some, Andrew mentioned it earlier with um, when he was explaining hospitable direct booking platform is you have to give them an easy way to do it or they're gonna, not going to do it. It is going to be too hard. Uh, so one of the things we do is in our guidebook, we have a section that says book again, and then we direct link out to our website. Exactly. This is where you go. This is how you do it. We make it as easy as possible. Um, okay. We are at brand loyalty. How often do you get repeat bookings, Emma? Okay. So, um, in 17 years, we have, I would say that 60% of our guests stay with us again. So we started with a much smaller house, um, about seven miles away from where the current two are. Uh, and some of them stay, some of them with real house. We've had that house for nine years. So, some of them, like yourself, we've got guests that come every year. And I think Scott mentioned that they have guests that come every year um, and several times a year. White Bean is a bit of an anomaly. Um, we launched that two years ago. And that's so solidly booked that people are actually struggling to get booked in. We're looking at 2025 now. Um, so that's a little bit more of an anomaly. But I think Bill is, is much more regular. Don't expect, like you said earlier, don't expect your guests to come year on year on year several times, don't be offended when they go and stay with a neighbor somewhere else. They're just trying different places out and that's fine. But we do find around 60% over 17 years do come back to us at some stage. That That's incredible. I mean, I, I aspire to be you, Emma. You're <laughs> my goal. 
Not always. (laughs) (laughs) Scott, what about you? Yeah, I mean, our company has only actually been in existence for several, a few years now. So um, repeat bookings are still we do. We had actually pretty good loyalty before we started doing direct bookings with with some people on the OTAs. Um, but now we're starting to see more. Um, I have. I actually have one guest who's going to stay four times in one property this year, which is amazing. I need to talk to them about buying a place. Um, but um, just as some numbers, uh, through August we had eleven hundred and seventy five total stays, um, and about a little over three percent were direct, um, and not all were repeat. Um, I'd say about half of those were repeat, and the other half were not. But one of the great things about that is um, those three percent of bookings actually counted for six and a half percent of our total revenue. So um, you know we see a, a a longer stay by about a day um, for our first stays with direct bookings. So um, I think the quality of the booking you're going to get with direct bookings, especially if it's a repeat, will be better. Um, and there's a lot less worry too that goes along with it um, because you, you know you're built that you're building that relationship with that person. That person's going to treat your property with a lot more respect than someone who's just coming for the weekend to, 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 you know, entertain themselves and catch a show. So um, it's, it's, we're, we're, and we're looking to grow that. Um, obviously I, I would like to see it up there on 10% by uh, in 2024 um, and then continue to grow from there. Excellent. So a key point I want to, I want everybody to pay attention to that was not said, but in case you didn't catch it, Emma has been doing this a while. Scott's just started. This is a process. You don't expect to hit 100% direct bookings right away. You grow those direct bookings little by little as you grow your business and you grow your brand. So don't get discouraged when you throw up your website and you're like, yeah, this is marketing. Yeah, I'm going to go 100% right away. It's not happening. Just use your marketing and then slowly grow and grow and grow. All right. Okay. Okay. Actually, that was yeah. one of my key aspects. <laughs> when I said at 10 <laughs> was don't expect it to be overnight. It's, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a journey. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Sustainable business. Okay. As we've talked about direct bookings, we like, but it's a lot of work. And there's a lot of folks out there who feel just allow the OTA to do the marketing for you in the exchange for that small percentage. And they think that's a really great idea and numbers wise. Yeah. Sometimes that, that works out, but there's some things you're giving up. So Andrew, what is it that people are giving up when they put their marketing plan fully into the OTA hands? Um, I mean, I'd say it's basic risk management that you're giving up. I mean, if you like look at another industry, so say like you're an influencer on like Twitter or TikTok or Instagram, what happens if you get deplatformed? Well, if you haven't been building an email newsletter marketing list that you own, then your your business is over, right? So that email marketing list is something you own as an influencer. It's the same thing with short term rentals. Uh, the only thing you can own is the direct booking side. Um, and we you know we talk about the marketing techniques of direct booking. You can't market on an OTA. Like you can't do you know say you have a slow season and you want to run you know like a promotion and try and fill fill those bookings. What are your options when you're on an OTA? You 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 really don't have any ability to market your property, your brand. And so you really have all of your eggs in, in one basket. And that's, yeah, it's not yeah. a good place to be as a business. Very good point. I know people who've been deplatformed just suddenly. Yeah, yeah it's not cool. Yeah. What about you, Scott? Yeah, that that's scary, the deplatforming thing. Uh, and and we, we try to do everything we can do to to not. And sometimes that that means, you know, just, you know, kind of capitulating mm-hmm. to what Airbnb or the OTA wants to do, um, fair or not. So, um, you know, control, um, not have not automatically having to give someone 20% back because of a minor inconvenience. Uh, it, it, like it, it, Wi-Fi goes out for one, you know, an hour or two and they complain. Airbnb is automatically giving them 20% back. Um, or, uh, you know, giving full refunds for no reason, um, when it really, you know, was all the 100% the guest, um, but they're still getting that back. So having that control and being able to, to, to say yes or no, um, you know, you get penalized on the OTA if you don't accept a reservation. Um, and that, that I don't think is fair. You should, I think you should be able to, to, to look at someone's past, um, reviews and, you know, get information like we get from hospitable, uh, about the guests and make a, an informed decision on whether or not you want to accept that booking or not, uh, and not have to worry about um, the, the ramifications to your standings on that platform when you do that. So, um, yeah, that's it's it's really the biggest thing for us is is having that control. Uh, 
yeah. and more more so than than paying them them the fee. Um, Absolutely. I mean, I can go on about the good old days when I paid Vervo a fee and you could mail them a photo. You didn't even have to upload a digital photo and you had full control. And all they did was facilitate the connection to the guest. And then you have the rest. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That was nice, but we won't go on about that. Okay. Things have changed. We've evolved. Um, so Emma, what is it that you're gaining with direct bookings? I think it's going back to what Scott was just talking about is actually the control over our business. We absolutely know we're a much smaller business, but we absolutely have that complete control over everything. Over if I want to hold a week for a guest who doesn't get paid for a couple of weeks and wants to book and pay a deposit, I can do that. And that and that brings so much to a lot of people rather than them thinking, oh, well, I, I, I'm not ready quite yet. I need to get paid and then I'm going to lose that holiday and it's exactly where I want to go. So I think it's that it's that really heartwarming trust. And for me, I'm a real people person. And it's knowing that I can make that difference by doing it this way. But I'm also making a difference to our properties. So I know who's staying in them. I know that I trust them. I'm trusting them with a large amount of money when they walk in that door and I know that I'm trusting them um and I think really it's it makes you really it makes me really proud of what I do um and I know that I'm the one that's done that no one else has done that all of our bookings are direct that's just me um and that's that's just a hugely fulfilling thing for me I love that so I will just simply add on um it's the relationship mm -hmm. it, it, it's and down to one word is that relationship without the OTA in between you and the guest. And I kind of, I think I referenced this before is, you know, building it that when the guest, you know, after they book with us and through their stay, even after they're saying we stayed with Nat and Tyann and it's not, we stayed at an Airbnb anymore. Uh, and it yeah. shows up our reviews too. And I'm sure you guys have seen that as well as your name shows up because they understand then that they have stayed with this person, not with some company or some platform. Um, so yeah, you gain that. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, right. So before we get to a couple questions, um, if anybody else has questions, please drop them in. We'll get to them in just a minute. Um, but I want each of us to give us one last thing about direct bookings. Um, and we'll go around. I'm going to do Andrew, Scott, Emma, myself. And in the meantime, folks, go ahead and drop questions in and we'll do questions after that. So Andrew, what is one last thing to let people know about direct bookings? Um, I hate to end on a negative note, but I, we didn't really touch on chargebacks. And I think that's um, an important consideration. You know, we talked about how maybe easy it is to get started, but you need to be careful. Um, and I think a lot of people end up having maybe their bad first experience um, when they set off on their own and they're not either protected from like a fraud based chargeback. So, you know, they take a booking and they end up not getting paid. Or if they have, you know, a chargeback based on, you know, some complaint or something where you're unable to resolve it. And you need to be prepared for that. And so that's, you know, having a system in place, you know, having a good paper trail for your communication, uh, for every charge that happens for, you know, not, you know, making sure you present yourself accurately. So if it does come to that, you're ready. Um, and I think even if you're ready, I think it can be overwhelming. And that's, you know, uh, another thing that, that we did with on the premium side is we take the chargeback where the merchant of record and some people might feel more comfortable not being the merchant of record uh, when they're doing direct booking. So you might want to search out a solution like that um, because you know, we, we pay another third party to, to talk to the banks. It's a very difficult conversation. You have to speak a different language almost to communicate with them. And it could be make the difference of, you know, losing out on thousands of dollars on a booking um, because you weren't prepared to defend a chargeback that you felt you should have won. Um, so if you don't want to deal with that, um, there are solutions out there. Um, and if you don't have a solution, you need to be careful. So. Yeah, very, very good point. Yeah, uh, Scott. yeah um, pick good partners. Um, like I said, with social media, you know, find someone who's good at doing that. Um, when when building your direct brand or your direct website, pick a good partner to do that with. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of the property management systems have the ability to host direct websites. Uh, we chose hospitable, 
Um, we're very happy with it. Um, but or you may choose to go with some other third party that builds your own direct website that gives maybe some more flexibility and add some items in that you want that the the, the property management systems don't offer. But but do your research. Um, there's a lot of options out there. Um, and pick someone you're comfortable with, someone you trust, uh, and um, you know, go on that journey with them. Um, and it, it'll be rewarding. Great, excellent info. Okay, Emma, one last thing. So I would say really, and it kind of brings a lot of what we've been talking about is persevere because nothing worth happening is, e is worth having, sorry, is easy. So it kind of goes back to what Andrew was saying about chargebacks as well. Be brave, trust yourself and back you and your business just because a guest just said, well, I had a 20 minute outage on, on my Wi-Fi. I'd like a full refund for the week. Don't panic and think, oh my goodness, that's what I need to do. It's just, just be brave, take a big deep breath. And, um, and trust yourself. Uh, there's no one between you and the guest. You are that first line. But just trust it because it is worth it. Direct bookings really are worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that reminds me of a quote that I just shared on Twitter today. And now I can't remember it. And um, don't have, I can't look it up in the second either. But go to my Twitter, Antion Marsink. And Something about it was about no business succeeds without making a courageous step. And that's what you're doing. You're making a courageous step. So my one last thing I want to tell folks, you guys, is you know what? You have to, to you have to tell your guests. You have to tell your guests you do direct bookings because if you don't tell them, they're they're not gonna know. Because we can have a brand in place, we can have the ability to take direct bookings in place. But unless we explicitly tell the guests we do direct bookings, they're not going to know. Uh, one of the ways I do that is I make sure it's within our messaging um, after their stay, during their stay, and they're in, in my Touch Day Digital Guidebook. I've got a whole section about book again and how they can book again. And then after their stay, the the thank you email says, "Hey, don't forget you can direct book with us next time." And and then I actually send a thank you card that physically arrives in their mailbox to say, thank you so much for staying with us. Here is a code for when you come back again. Uh, so telling them and then telling them again, and then telling them again, and then telling them again in different ways. So, okay. Those are our one last things. And we have a couple questions. Um, Brandon says, Hey, Tyan, can you talk about collecting guest emails through touch day? So yeah, this is a feature we just rolled out. It's really cool. You can send, um, you can set up a topic just like our first impressions is a special topic. The collecting emails is a special topic, and then you can link directly to that. So say for instance, your guest come books on Airbnb, you don't get the email address anymore. You can't send emails, but you really need that email address. Well, you can set up um, touch day to send them a text, say, Hey, looking so forward. Thank you so much for booking. We look forward to your arrival. Um, will you give us your email address so we can get more information to you? Obviously a lot shorter number of characters than I just said. Um, but you get, you get, you understand what I'm saying. Um, so that's one way that you can do it. It's really simple, uh, to do. Okay. Uh, anonymous, would you put your logo on your OTA photos? How many or which ones need to be careful if so? Scott, do you do this? Sorry, I was muted. Um, we actually had that discussion this morning and, and yes, um, we are moving to doing that. Um, putting them on the TVs um, and, you know, you don't necessarily say, you know, direct bookings, but you just, you know, Branson Lakes Lodging, your logo. Um, that, you know, we were talking about building that brand, um, that way people know that they might be booking through Airbnb, but they are staying with, you know, your company. Yep. And I've seen I it so that... bold. Uh, I mean, sorry. I've seen yeah. like people take the direct booking tent card in the, in like their premier photo on Airbnb and it hasn't been blocked yet. You know, they have the QR code on there, the web, the web address, save 10% uh -huh. booking direct on their Airbnb photo. Um, I don't recommend that. That is, that is dangerous, but yeah, try and try and find a way to be subtle about it. You know, if you have like coasters made or napkins and that's in the photo where it can be read, that's a nice way to sneak it in there. And that's, you know, you could argue that that's just part of your branded experience. It doesn't mean you're trying to direct, you know, people to your own site, 
but they're mm-hmm. going to get the message. You know, the, the savvy guests see that and they immediately know they can find you. Yeah. Yep. I, and it's, it's pretty standard in our market in Branson to have it on the TVs. Um, the other thing I do is we have a sign outside and I make sure I get that sign with an yep. exterior photo. You know, those little sly, sly things. Emma, what are you going to say from, from the other side, the play we're actually away at the minute, and I actually found this place directly. I found it via, via an online site. Um, and I always find that I look for the house name. So if you put a photo of the house name, um, you get a nice photo, arty photo with the place that place that it is. That's the first thing I do is I then just Google that and find them directly. So it's quite a subtle way of doing it, but I've I've found loads of places that way. Excellent. All right. And then we had one more question from Mark. He asked, are there any downsides to accepting direct bookings? Uh, Emma, do you want to go first or? Yeah. I mean, it's a uh, business, no, but... you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I, one of the things Andrew touched on um, is chargebacks and having to deal with disputes after the fact of a stay. Um, and especially if there's no guest communication during that stay, right? Um, that, that, that is a potential downside. Um, but I'm having a, you know, as, as, as long as, again, like I said, you pick the right partner and you can do things like guest vetting, um, and we have built in property damage protection and things like that. It's it, to me, it's really very similar to, to leveraging an OTA. Um, and you get, you, you get more control so that that's not an downside. Um, and you have the ability to recover if there is an incident. So, um, I think the, about the worst part of the down, uh, the direct booking is if you don't partner with the right, um, the right companies to help you do it. And you don't, um, take it as seriously as you would a, another booking. If you yeah. just take, you know, any booking willy nilly from anybody without any thought into it, and then they trash your place and you don't have any protections, then that can definitely be a problem. I think you, I think you touched on one too, Scott, when you're saying it's, it's it is a bit more work, you know? So like, I don't know if that qualifies as a downside, but you do have to be a bit more careful, right? You are kind of filling a lot of gaps that you relied on an OTA for. So you know, we talked about communication, you know, your customer might not have an app if they're, you know, if they're not using touch day. Um, so all of the decisions and all of the work that went into the OTA app that your guest is familiar with, you kind of have to do more work to familiarize that guest for, for your stay. And so not a downside, but it is, it is a bit more work. Yeah. Reminding them to check their spam folder. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd link in what um, Scott and Andrew have both said in that it is it is more work. And undeniably, I think we've all touched on that as well. Um, and then talking about the kind of chargebacks, as um, Scott was saying, it's we actually we make sure that we communicate in the last email that we send to the guests before they arrive to say, you should find the house perfect. If you don't, please do let us know straight away because we can't resolve it afterwards we use the touch day feature which says let us have your first impression so when they arrive they get that we put that in there in the email before they arrive when they arrive there's a little welcome note saying welcome to the house if you don't find everything perfect please do let us know so we can resolve it straight away we bang that in again and again and again and so if there is something that comes up after the fact we do have that kind of backup to say well actually we did ask you to let us know and all our guests only ever stay for a week so if you if you don't tell us and don't give us time to resolve it we're kind of in a bit of a sticky situation here and we've been able to push back very nicely quite a few times on that yep that's the paper trail right is you know showing Absolutely. that you know you did communicate you did offer chances to resolve and to, to yeah yeah yep. and several very times fair. like Tyan said again and again and again <laughs> yep all right. So we have two questions asking, how do you add your logo to your TV? Um, it's actually really simple. Photoshop. Um, there's other programs you can use too. Personally, I just throw it into Photoshop and, and new to me. TV and put the layer underneath and yeah, there you go. There's also services. I know a box brownie or something like that, that will add your logo to your photos for you too. If you're you know, not as tech savvy. Uh, or if you don't have a Photoshop subscription, but um, yeah, it, and it's very, really inexpensive to have done. Absolutely. All right. 
I think that's it. I've gotten to the bottom of my questions and we're wrapping up on time too. Thank you so much, Emma, Scott, and Andrew. I really appreciate you joining us for this uh, webinar on direct bookings. And to all our attendees, I really hope you guys got some great value. I have a bunch of notes that I've taken from the wisdom from these folks. I really appreciate it, everybody. Um, thanks so much. And uh, oh yeah, I have to do my sales thing. Please look up Hospitable and Touch Day um, brought to you. This webinar has been brought to you by both of them. Um, would love to talk to you all about the solutions that we both have. Um, they're pretty amazing. As you can see, Emma, Scott, and yes, I'll throw myself in there too, as we are all excellent, successful property managers and hosts. Um, and part of that is due to our amazing tech stack. So you can always ask us more how we use those. Okay. I think that's it. Anything else from you guys before we sign off? No, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks right. for coming, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.